The scenario for this demonstration is that we have a customer table with usual information about customers. Some of the data, such as the customer name and the city where they live, is not sensitive data and not worth encrypting. Other data, such as the credit card type and number, as well as some notes that could contain some sensitive personal information, needs to be encrypted. So let's go ahead and set things up. I'm going to use master and create a login user1 with a strong password. Okay, user1 already exists. And then I'll create a database, encryption DB, and use that database. And then I'm also going to create a user that is mapped to the user1 login. And here's the table where we're going to store information about our customers. Customer name, customer ID, name, and city. Those fields contain non-sensitive data, so we're not going to encrypt that. So I define the cust ID as an int, presumably make it a primary key and an identity column. Put the name and the city. And then we're also going to store the credit card type, the credit card number, and the notes field. And we're going to encrypt that data. Using data encryption in this fashion requires that you change the data type of the field. The reason is that the encryption functions within SQL Server 2008 return var binary data. So that needs to be the type of the fields within the table. And they need to be big enough to hold the encrypted data. Because encrypted data is always longer than the clear text data. In designing this database, you have to make some hard decisions. Encryption is a very processor-intensive operation. So you only want to use encryption to protect data that's absolutely necessary. You might argue that, well, credit card type, you know, just a string that says Visa or MasterCard or America Express or whatever, that's not really sensitive data. But you could also make an argument that with that kind of information, it provides some information about the actual credit card number that could make it easier to get at and decrypt that credit card number data. And then should notes about a customer really be encrypted data? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. If it contains personal information, if your salespeople are inserting sensitive information such as, I don't know, maybe the number of children and the ages of the children or social security numbers or things like that, then yes, definitely you should encrypt that data. So go through that kind of a thought process before you decide to encrypt data within a table. I'll go ahead and create the table. And now we have a place to store our data. I'll grant access to the table to user1. And we're done setting everything up. The first thing I need to do within the database is create the database master key. When you create a new database, in this case encryption DB, SQL Server does not automatically create a database master key. Because if you're not going to use encryption within it, there's no reason to have that laying around. So I'll create that master key, encrypt it by password, and remember that when I execute this statement, it also encrypts it using the service master key of this SQL Server instance. So it's now stored in two different places encrypted by the service master key and using this password. If you want to, you can drop either one of those versions of the database master key, but generally you don't need to do that. All right, we set up the database, and so now it's time to create a key that we're going to use in order to encrypt data. The first key I'm going to create is an asymmetric key using a valid SQL Server identifier, in this case, user1 asymmetric key, using the authorization clause, which again assigns ownership to user1, and using the RSA 2048 algorithm. Go ahead and execute that code. And now we have an asymmetric key created within the database. Then I'm going to create a symmetric key called user1 symmetric key using a particular algorithm, in this case RC4, and I'm going to protect this symmetric key 
using the asymmetric key that I just created. And I'll create that symmetric key. There's various system catalogs that provide information about the keys that are available. One is the sys.symmetric keys catalog that lists all of the symmetric keys. This might be a little bit surprising because it shows two different keys. The key that I just created as well as the database master key. The database master key is a symmetric key and so it appears within the catalog. Notice that the algorithm for the database master key is triple DES. Just a different, pretty highly secure encryption algorithm. We have the keys set up, so now it's time to insert some data. Anytime you use a symmetric key, you have to explicitly open it. The only exception is the database master key. And the reason that's an exception is because it is protected by the service master key. If it's not already open when you do any kind of encryption operation using a key that is protected by the database master key, SQL Server checks to see if it's open. If it's not, it uses the version that is protected by the service master key to automatically open it. If you drop that version, then you would need to explicitly open the database master key. In this case, I left both versions intact, and so I don't need to explicitly open the database master key. So I'll open up that symmetric key, and I have to specify the asymmetric key with which it was encrypted. I'll execute that, and now that key has been read from wherever it's stored within SQL Server, decrypted, and is available within protected memory within SQL Server. And then here's an insert statement that is used to put data into a table. Same old insert statement that you use to insert any kind of data, whether it's encrypted or not. So I'm going to insert data into the customer table and provide values for the customer ID, the customer name, and the location. Now I need to encrypt the data. In the first field, I'm going to put in the literal string visa. In order to encrypt the data, I'm going to use the encrypt by key function. This takes the GUID of the key that I want to use to encrypt the data. So I can supply the GUID and pass it directly into the method, or I can use the key GUID function and pass in the name I gave the key. That returns the GUID for that key, and then I pass that to the encrypt by key function. The result of this function call is that the literal string in clear text here is encrypted and returned and used as one of the values in the insert statement. I do the same thing for the credit card number and then I also encrypt some notes. Alright, I've already opened my symmetric key so I just need to run this statement. I'll do it and now we've inserted a row of data into the table and encrypted three of the fields. Any time I open a symmetric key, I need to explicitly close it. This releases it from memory. That's important both because it frees up the little bit of memory that's being used as well as it makes it inaccessible once again to any attackers. Execute that and now the key is out of memory. So we can look at the contents of the table and see that we have a customer ID, a customer name, and a city, and then basically some gibberish for the credit card type, the credit card number, and the notes. That's the text representation that Management Studio displays of that binary data.